Hello everyone. Welcome to the Earth Tones Girl channel. My name is Denise and this is Earth Vlog number 67. How are you all? Um, the last time I was here I was very enthusiastically sharing the news of my new pattern. It has been so amazing. Um, to all of you that have purchased a copy, thank you so, so much. And if you've already started knitting, please don't forget to use the hashtag uh, one more step sock so that I can see your progress and have a little sock parade that I like to do on Instagram. Um, how is everybody? If you are in the Northeast, uh, summer has officially begun. My children are finished with school. It is beautiful outside today, as you can see from the sun coming on in. Um, yeah, it's it's we're off to a really good start. We've just been taking it easy. Uh, this is the beginning of the second week, so oh, <laughs> just enjoying sleeping in. We don't have that morning rush to get to school. It's been really, really great. Um, and I am the last time I was here, like I said, I was talking about the pattern and I didn't share any sock news or progress with you. I have four, one, wait, well, six pairs to share with you. There's been a lot of knitting. Although I say, some of you are going to laugh at me when I say this, there has been a lot of knitting, but not as much as I would have liked. <laughs> um, I've been test knitting and doing a lot of behind the scenes. There was a shop update, uh, which was amazing. So thank you to everybody that purchased um, charms and pins uh, during the update. That was wonderful. Um, and I'm kind of all over the place, so I'm just going to talk. Um, I've decided to try to keep the shop more frequently updated, not, not to do like one big giant update, because I think that's going to be a lot easier for people and for me going forward in terms of making things available to you all. And I'm not going to have bulk orders to pack all at once. So going forward that's what's going to be happening in the shop um like i'm taking the first two weeks off and then hopefully we'll do an update in the next week or so i do have some more charms coming in the mail so stay tuned for that um any more admin we talked about the pattern the hashtag the shop uh there's a lot of fun stuff coming in the fall and I, I want to gush and tell you everything now, but I think I'm going to wait and spread it out because it's just too early right now to talk about fall. But so let's talk about socks. Lots and lots. Okay, let, let's pick up the pile. <laughs> As you see from the, the YouTube thumbnail. Oh, look at this pile. Oh my gosh. This just makes me so happy. Okay. So let's start from the oldest and work our way forward. Let's do that. So let me put these on the blocker for you. Uh, oh, wait, of course I have notes here and I'm going completely off script, but it's okay, it doesn't matter. <laughs> so this pair I started in the fall and I was kind of in a not so great place when I was knitting these, but um, I have to say that they were such a comfort and I know for many of you um, making whatever that making may be is a very huge comfort and considering especially uh, right now everything that's happening in the US knitting is really important for me right now so um, that said here they are <laughs> here are my coffee toffee socks and like I said I was knitting these last fall I started them in gosh November I don't think I shared these yet um yeah I was knitting on these did I share these I don't think I did I was knitting on these in November and if I did well you know what we get to see them again um this yarn the name of this is coffee toffee it's by tiny human knits and it was really soothing that the striping repeat was only three three colors um i found these went really fast and i decided again i when i where i was knitting these i didn't have access to a contrasting color at the time so i just said let me keep going i'll finish them and then i'll put in afterthought heels or as some people may correct me for thought heels uh and here they are and i love them so much these are again even though i was knitting these in a in a weird frame of mind they are 
they're they're a reminder. They're they're a really good reminder. It's like a diary entry. So um, and if you've been watching for a while, you know that I I treat my socks as diary entries. So yes. Um, but yeah, here they are. It is my what pad? Just my No Fear Shorty sock. Uh, I just did them a little bit longer and did an afterthought heel instead of the heel flap and gusset. And then my usual rounded toe. There they are. And if you all get a chance to try, I think that Tiny Human Knits Laura is having an update this week, next week. You know, I'll put it in the in the show notes for you down below. If you get a chance to purchase her yarn, what I love about her yarn is she sells 50 gram socks sets, 50 gram balls and hundred or 50 gram skeins and 100 gram skeins, which is really great if you're either strapped for cash or you just don't want so much yarn, you don't want a full 100 gram skein. Um, the 50s are great and I made this with 50s. Um, yeah, and I got a whole pair done. So um, granted, my I cast on 64 stitches on a 2.25 needle. I cannot guarantee that 50 grams will take you the whole way through, but it did for me with this pair. So that is pair number one. And earlier, so that was November, great. Um, earlier this year, I think in March, Jen Yard, who is Everything Shapes Us on Instagram, she did a scrappy sock cowl, I'm checking my notes as usual, called the Easy Peasy Scrappy Sock Cowl. Uh, it was her first time doing one, doing a sock cowl, and she hit it so far out of the park. It was so much fun. I cast on a pair of socks, just with minis, just pretty random colored minis that I had, but I wasn't loving it. And I wanted my socks to look like hers. And um, Jen uses a lot of opal in her scrappy socks. And I know I had an opal advent calendar from a couple of years ago, either 2016 or 2017. I don't remember, but had an advent calendar um, that I'd gotten from the Woolly Brew. They're in Scotland, actually. And I thought, I, I wasn't sure what to do with it. So Jen inspired me, this cal that she hosted inspired me to pull them out and make these. <laughs> Look at these. These are scrappy socks. This is what I wanted to make and what I've always wanted to make and didn't know that I always wanted to make them. I let me pull back so you can see them. I love them so much. I cannot wait for the weather to cool off so that I can wear these. I mean, look at these. Oh my gosh. I love them so much. So the advent calendar was 25 mini skeins that were only 10 grams. And I got this full pair. I used a, the contrasting heel is in a solid opal color. I'll put all of this in the description box for you down below because I really wanted the yarn to, the contrasting color to match the same yarn as the sock. So I ordered this, oh, I don't even remember where. Anyway, um, but I ordered, these are easy to find. The, the opal solids are pretty easy to find. The mini skeins are a little bit trickier, but I did find a source. It's purple, purplicious, purple. I'll put it right here on the screen. <laughs> Forgive me. Um, but she is incredible. She has an Instagram account and she has an Etsy shop and she sells mini skeins on her, um, in her Etsy shop. So opal yarn is not that hard to find, but the minis are. So she makes minis and then sells sets of 20, 30, and 40 uh, 10 gram minis. I think she also does 20 gram, but I get so many questions. Where do you buy your minis? Where do you buy your yarn? So I will link to her down below. Um, but yeah, here they are. This is, I basically just did the sock exploration, my sock exploration pattern, which is my go-to vanilla. So. 64 stitches, 2.25. I did a contrasting shadow wrap, short row heel, rounded toe, and I changed color with the minis every 10 rounds. So I knit 10 rounds of each mini skein and I had so much left over. It was amazing. And what's amazing about opal yarn is as you're knitting it, 
the, the yarn itself patterns. So a 10 gram mini is going to give you almost a full repeat. So you're, you're always, the socks are always going to look scrappy. In other words, in that 10 grams, you're not going to get another repeat of this. So for example, from here to here, actually maybe a little bit less, probably to the green is 10 rounds. I'm not gonna see this again in that 10 rounds uh, in the rest of the ball because the color is going to change. That's the, also the beauty of opal minis. So, oh my gosh, look, just, just, let's just scan for a second. Look at these, you guys. Oh, I love them so much and opal, is not necessarily the softest yarn. It doesn't have, it's just marine, it, I think it's merino. Um, or maybe it's just listed as wool. Um, it doesn't specify the breed on the ball, but it is a 75-25 blend. So it's 75% wool, 25% merino, and it's a coarser yarn. So it's heavier, it's meatier. Um, some people refer to it, I've referred to it as a workhorse yarn but it's going to hold and wear like iron. There's, oh my gosh, these, I'm not wearing a hole in these anytime soon. <laughs> Love them. So that was one pair. And I thought I have so much left over. Let's make another pair. <laughs> so I made another pair. Okay, hold on to your hats for these. <laughs> hold on, getting them on the blockers. Hang on. Are you excited? <laughs> so here is the other pair. Ta -da! Look at these. I made a shorty pair. Again, if you look at the full size pair and the shorties, there's these all came from the same minis and you cannot see a repeat anywhere. Look at that. It's kind of amazing. So I, it's why I love this yarn so much. So I made minis and for the sharp eyed, can you see? Look at that. I did a garter stitch square heel. Oh my gosh. There is an account on Instagram that stumbled as I was going down the Instagram rabbit hole one day, um, her account stumbled into my scrolling. Um, I'll put her information here for you and I'll link to her down below. Um, of course I'm blanking on her name and I didn't write it down, but anyway, I will, I'll put it all here for you. And she had, she was knitting 100% natural or 100% wool socks no nylon, and she did this afterthought, not an afterthought, she did this garter stitch square heel. I'm gonna take one off the blocker so you can see a little better. So this is what the bottom looks like. Can you see? Let me turn it in the light so you can see it a little better. So you have a garter stitch heel flap. There's slip stitches on the side, so it's one slip stitch because a garter stitch is two rounds is one slip stitch. So I did, I picked up the slip stitches and then did this square heel and it really creates, I love a square heel, I really do. It creates a really nice, as you can see, like there's a pocket right there. It's a perfect L and your, I find your heel just slides and sits right in there. And I kind of became a little obsessed with this garter stitch heel now this is the first time i'd ever knit one thank you so much for the inspiration first time i ever knit one and it is at garter stitch by nature is really really stretchy so of course i went down another rabbit hole <laughs> to figure out how to adjust for that percentage wise to knit fewer rows on the heel flap so that you don't get all of this extra give so, am I writing a pattern for that? Maybe. <laughs> Stay tuned. I'll talk about that later. But uh, I think I figured it out. I think I figured out the percentage on what to do here. But here they are. I love them so much. And like I said, it will. there will be a square heel. So the, as you're turning the heel, you're creating the, the little square pocket on the bottom. 
it's really amazing an amazing design so um it's not mine i did not create this i'm just kind of playing and figuring things out as i go which is what i do so that is my i'm just sliding this back on the blocker um so yeah here they are no fear shorty socks 64 stitches 2.25 and i just did the modification with the garter stitch square heel and here they are let's turn them so you can see the other side oh my goodness i love them so much and i should have brought the ball over i still have yarn left i could probably do another full pair and it's 25 so it's 25 10 gram minis so I can't do the math because I'm terrible at math. But anyway, it's a lot of yarn. It's way more than you think you have. So if you can get your hands on some, give it a go. Amazing, amazing yarn. I love it so much. And because I was still crazy in love and having such a great time with this cow, I did another pair. <laughs> the cow was, I think, six weeks six weeks or eight weeks um I don't even remember how long it was how much how long it ran for but I was able to get three pairs like I just just made it in under the wire on this third pair um and I had been inspired by I believe it's an, another Instagram account uh Tony Sweeney um who knit a pair of hand warmers with this similar colorway and I've wanted a pair of socks in this for the longest time. So here is my third pair. I love them so much. And I just played around with the striping here just because I could. Why not? So this yarn is by Legacy Fiber Arts. It is two mini sets, Earth Tones minis and April showers minis. So the more colorful pastels are the April showers and the browns on the darker colors are the earth tones. And here they are. Now, yes, they're scrappy, but I did kind of want them to match a little bit. Um, and like I said, I did have more yarn left over, but I really wanted to save some because I'd love to duplicate this striping on a pair of hand warmers or hand, just mitts. Um, probably Jen's pattern for the Everything November Mitts. I've knit those before. If you're not familiar, I'll link those down below too. Um, so I definitely had some more yarn left over, but um, I was saving it. So that's why I put in this white stripe. I don't know. I just thought it would look nice to do the white stripe. Like, why not? I'm always experimenting, as you know, <laughs> constantly playing, experimenting, trying something new because I can, just because I can. And I got the little toes to match. And there we go. Oh, I am a little obsessive with my matching. It's just what I do. So here they are, my third pair. So that was so much fun. And this is 64, 2.25, and Shadow Wrap Short Row Heel, Rounded Toe. There we go. Um, I think that's it for FOs. Actually, I have half FOs, so HFOs half or hose. I hate to say that. I hate that expression. Um, a lot of people call them hose half objects or half finished objects, but I like to say half finished as opposed to a hoe. Anyway, never mind. Um, <laughs> me digressing as usual. Um, so I'm going to save. Yeah, I'll talk about this one now. A really amazing designer, Sylvia Watts Cherry, who is with a cherry on top. To on Instagram. She just designed her first sock pattern and it's stunning. I was in the middle of test knitting or having my one more step sock pattern test knit and she sent me a message. She reached out and asked if um, I would be willing to test knit this new pattern for her. And I thought, absolutely and i saw the picture fell madly in love with it and said yes and she's like but you're in the middle but then she thought and said well you're in the middle of your test net and i said well there's always time there's time i mean the stage where i was in my test net 
I was waiting for feedback from people. So I thought while I'm waiting, I, and I, I gave people week, about four weeks, three to four weeks to get one sock done. So I had the time. Uh, there was a lot to do, but I definitely, I made the time because I love this pattern so much. And I have not knit a lace pattern in a really, really long time. Um, here it is. Look at that. Oh my goodness. This pattern is, now I haven't blocked mine yet. Um, and as you can see, it's a tonal yarn. This yarn is, well, let's talk about the pattern first, of course. The pattern is the Lynx Field Socks by Sylvia Watts Cherry. I will link to her pattern down below. It is out now. Yay. It was released today's Tuesday, the 28th, and it came out yesterday, the 27th. So I'm so, so excited for her. Um, so proud of her. I know what goes into making a pattern. Um, this last pattern for me was the first textured one that I had done and, and making sure your numbers are right and your pictures are right. And all of the stitch counts work. It, it's just, I know what that feels like. I know that excitement and anxiety all at the same time. And I am so happy that I was a part of this with Sylvia. So Sylvia, congratulations. So now let's see if I can show you, of course, I don't have a mannequin here with me. Um, the next episode I would have, I've already started the second sock. So I've got that going here um, and I will have those finished by the next episode and then I'll put them on my little mannequin feet so you can really see the design. So this is what the design looks like. That's it. So I did two rounds of this beautiful diamond pattern on the leg and then the heel is a slip stitch heel flap and gusset right in there. And there was one, I was able to do one repeat as I was doing the heel flap and gusset, one more repeat. And then it was three repeats past that on the foot. And then I did, um, and then the toe. And there we go. And then you stop, and I tried to stop the pattern right at the end of the last round, um, just so it would look neat. Uh, I've seen some people, depending on the length of your foot, they stop halfway through the diamond. It really doesn't matter. You stop where you stop and where you need to. Um, just aesthetically, I just was hoping I could get down and complete one more round, and I was able to. So this is what it looks like. Let me just hold it up so you can see. Look at how beautiful that is. Oh my goodness. And then this design on the edge. Let me put my hand in so you can see it. Look at that. It's gorgeous and I love how everything just is so perfect it just goes right into the heel here's the other side oh it's just it's a gorgeous gorgeous pattern you guys it really is and it is very I would say that it is beginner friendly if you are a relatively new sock knitter and you've never done lace or followed a chart like a really detailed chart there's a chart in my pattern but it's pretty simple it's only four round it's a four round repeat um, this chart was 18 rounds and if you haven't done a lace pattern before, this is a great place to start. The pattern is very clear, very well written. Um, just the information that you need, no more, no less. It's perfect. It's perfect. I'm not a huge fan of like super chatty patterns. <laughs> um, so this was just, it, I loved it. She absolutely nailed it nailed it so again congratulations sylvia uh the i will link to where that is available i know it's available on ravelry and i think two other sites so i will link to those down below for you um oh and then the yarn the yarn is nudegat n-u-d-e hyphen g-a-t by mitchell's fiber arts mitchell's creations fiber arts and that's Terra. So Tara is an amazing dyer also. I mean, I wanted a creamy yarn without it being flat, like a really flat in this tonal. There's so much going on in this yarn. I mean, look at that. It's, it's so beautiful. So, so beautiful. Um, yep. So that is the yarn that I'm using. And this is about, 
I didn't use a full skein. I should weigh this. I'll have all the finished details. Um, I'll share those with you when I finish the other sock in, a, in another episode. <sighs> so that is that. And my last pair that I have to share with you, let me slide this on a blocker here. Now I was hoping to finish. So these are my whips now. <laughs> um, these still have markers in them. Let me see if I can get this on. If I tuck this in and do this strategically, bear with me for a second. La, 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 la. Okay. So this is an experiment. This project was a definite experiment. Again, why? Because I can. <laughs> and I was curious to see. Can you do it? Yes, I can. All right. I can move the ball inside. All right. There we go. So there's a little bump here, but you'll understand why I put the ball down inside. So here we go. Look at these, you guys. Can you spot the differences? <laughs> you know, you get those memes sometimes on Instagram or social media or you used to get pictures like that. Like you'd have two images and you had to find what the differences were. Can you spot the differences here? <laughs> I'll pull back a little bit. This one was knit top down. So 64 stitches, 2.25, just your standard issue, top down sock. I did 15 rounds on the cuff, shadow wrap short row heel, rounded toe. Then I thought, hmm, can I knit the shadow wrap heel toe up? Now, I had gotten that question many times, and I always said the answer was yes, and I knew theoretically how to do it, but I'd never actually done it yet. Well, and there's a little bump there, which I will explain in a minute. It's not on this side as much, but it's, it's anyway. Okay, so I decided to give this a go and see if I could do it. And I could. I did. Ah! I put up a little teaser tutorial on Instagram, and... um. It was quite a little bit of buzz going on. And when are you doing a tutorial? And oh my gosh, I, I will do a full tutorial on this. The reason I haven't done one yet is those little bumps. So let's talk about it for a second. The, these little are the bumps here are the corners, are the edges. So what you're basically doing is a provisional cast on. I'm going to hold this this way so you can see it. You're doing a provisional cast on over two circular needles. This is how I, I, I knit over two circulars. You can do this over double points or magic loop. So provisional cast on over the, the cord, the cable of the sock needle, and you start knitting. So you start building, you've, you've cast on both sides of the sock, the base stitches. You start knitting the shadow wraps as you normally would, come over the top, and then you return to knitting in the round and this, that second half of the stitches are waiting for you. The glitch with this or the little area where I have to fine tune it and do this again is in the corners. Because you're using, using a provisional cast on, there is no base really to pick up that stitch to create the twin for a shadow wrap heel. So that's why it looks a little bit bumpy. I kind of fudged it in there, but I've been thinking about it a lot. <laughs> and I think I figured out a way around it. So once I've got that down and it's really, really a clean edge, then I will do the tutorial. I'm not gonna do anything shoddy and halfway because I know. So then I did, and what I, what I always have a, a problem with, with toe up socks, is the distance from the edge of the toe to where where do I start the heel that's always this distance in here so what I did was mirrored and because I mirrored the rounds so because this toe is a little bit deeper that's what this marker is for so I counted how many rounds were on this toe and how many rounds were on this toe subtracted the difference and added that 
to the body of the foot, to the length of the foot. So in theory, they are the same length. It's just one has more yellow than the other. Put the knit the shadow wrap short row heel. So this is top that it can be now done top down. Not now, but here is the actual proof. For many of you who've already done it, great. It can be done top down. It can be done toe up. No modifications. You do it the same way. And then from, let's see if I can hold these like this. From this edge and this edge straight up to the top are the same. And I did 50 rounds and then 15. So I was just about to start, tuck the ball inside. This was not my idea. I also saw somebody do this on, um, on Instagram as well. They tuck the ball that they're using into the sock and then just pull the yarn out of the ball, which makes, oh my gosh, so much sense. Absolutely brilliant, genius. I have been really inspired by Instagram lately. It The platform has squirrel, having a squirrel moment. The platform has changed quite a bit. Um, it's changed a lot. And I find you have to dig a lot more and look a lot more to find the things that interest you, to find the accounts that you follow. They've made it very difficult to do that. It's Instagram has almost become like a TikTok or um, with all the videos, 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 videos. And the videos serve a purpose because I've seen so many amazing tips and tricks and things shared via videos. And I just did the same thing with this little mini tutorial. Um, so it does serve a purpose, but you have to adapt with it. And some people have not and have moved on and that's totally fine. I more than understand that. Um, and there's a lot of other reasons why it's, it's social media and it's tedious, but I've been finding inspiration there lately, which has been fantastic. Um, I'm not on it as much. I'm on it a lot, but I'm not posting as much because I post when I'm inspired to post. But that said, this little idea with the ball inside, absolutely brilliant. And of course, someone is now edging right outside the window. I hope you can't hear it. I will try to get rid of that <laughs> in editing. Um, so yep, I am about to start the bind off, the ribbing, and then I will do the bind off. So the two hiccups I've always had with toe up have been this distance in here, which I've now figured out for myself. Every knitter has to figure out that distance for themselves. Oh my gosh. Okay, hold on one second. I have a new respect for summer and I used to hate it. I enjoy it now because I enjoy the downtime, the warmth, what I can't stand is especially in my neighborhood as soon as the weather gets warm the lawn mowers and the leaf blowers come out oh my god it is so noisy around here you have these long lulls of blissful quiet and then all of a sudden it, there's a barrage of noise and lawn mowers and edgers they're so loud oh my gosh they're so loud so i apologize for the background noise right now i closed this window that's right here i have the other window open but hopefully it's not overwhelming so my two issues with toe up has always been this distance mastering that like i said i now have i can't tell you what number that is for you that is going to be a trial and error for you as a knitter you have to find that number for yourself and my other issue with toe up was finding the perfect bind off because i didn't like the bind off to flare i didn't want it to be too tight and i wanted it to match as closely to a top down cast on as possible. And I think I found it. So it's the extra stretchy, no flare bind off. Um, I'm going to try that. And then we will do a, another side by side comparison. Once these are both done, um, I will put them on the mannequin feet. And I also wanted to wear them. I really wanted similar identical looking semi-identical, sort of identical looking socks, but I wanted to see, is there a difference? A top-down sock in your shoe, a toe-up sock in your shoe, do they ride differently? Do they wear differently? Do they feel different? I'm thinking absolutely not, but I really wanted this to be kind of an experiment. Um, and I also fell madly in love with this yarn and thought it's just, it's so perfect for this project. This is Sunrise Sunset. 
and there's so much going on. There's so much color in here. Sunrise Sunset by Legacy Fiber Arts. And this is a 50 gram, this is a 50 gram sock set with the contrasting mini. The mini came with it. And this is how much I have left of the mini. Of course, it's kind of ugh, falling apart a little bit, but that's how much I have left. More than enough to finish the, um, the cuff on this one. And there we go. And I should still have some left over. So I have, as I said, it's a 50 gram ball and I still have da, 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 this much left of it. That much. Can you see that? I have that much left of the 50 grams. This is probably about, I'm roughly saying maybe 15. I'll let you know. Um, so this is what I have. Sorry, that does not look very aesthetically pleasing, but it is what it is. <laughs> so there you go. Oh my goodness. Um, I had a question about whether you could in theory make this toe rounder. I think it's rounder already than the rounded toe. It's also a little bit deeper. So yeah, there you go. Um, so yeah, those are my thoughts on that. I was just thinking for a moment if I had anything else to share. I don't think so. Um, I think that's it for FOs and whips for now. Of course, there's always, that's never all of the whips, but it's all the ones I'm going to share today. <laughs> there's always more whips hiding in a closet or a basket somewhere. Um, Upcoming Cal news, I'm going to be joining the Woolly Thistle. Uh, they are having their fourth annual sock sprint. The Woolly Thistle thought the okay. The Woolly Thistle Sock Sprint. <laughs> I have to say that slowly and articulate clearly. Uh, their sprint is July 15th to the 28th. It is two weeks, and you can you have to knit. The requirements are to knit a pair of socks in two weeks so one sock a week um yep a pair or two socks they don't necessarily have to match but usually you're knitting a pair um again july 15th to the 28th and they've just put out the woolly thistle kareen and her gang have just put out a new sock bag it's beautiful i got the first one this is their second one i got the first one last year and the yarn for, actually I happen to have it here, the yarn for the One More Step socks, this yarn came out of the bag from last year. So this X, this John Arbin uh, Exmoor 4-ply, this was in the bag last year, and the new bag is out this year. Oh, oh my gosh, it just came in the mail. Wow, 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 <laughs> it's gorgeous oh my gosh I will save that for another episode um and go into that and and possible ideas uh, and they also included on the card Kareen included my new sock pattern as a pattern suggestion on the card that's included the postcard or um, pattern card that comes with the kit so Kareen thank you so so much to Maggie and Kareen and everyone else there at the Wooly Thistle thank you all so so much um and I might be on an upcoming episode with them. So fingers crossed. We, I did that with them last year. Um, and um, yeah, they have invited me back. So I'm really, really excited. I think that's happening next week. So I will keep you posted. There'll be lots more to share. Um, and that's it, I think. Um, fall news. We'll talk about that later. Um, more Cal news later and that's all i have for you today thank you so much for joining me it was so good to sit here and catch up i'm trying as always not to make the episode too too long uh, but thank you so much um, to everyone in the northeast enjoy your summer and uh, i will see you all again really really soon thanks so much everybody take care bye